week and, and uh, okay let me show you let me show you what i did last week which, which you forgot um so this is this is stuff i did last week um so this is this is the review session and i did uh, last week and uh, you may recall that i did four examples I did, I did four examples on, on maximum likelihood estimation last, last uh, Monday. These are the four examples I did. Right now, uh, today I'm gonna do, I hope you guys watched the video for the session today. I, I asked you guys to watch, there's only one video you had to watch today, which is, which is this one, right? And uh, this video contains 10 examples. Uh, let me show you. Uh, these are the 10 examples I asked you to watch, right? Um, do you have questions on, on the 10 examples? Like, is there any particular example you'd like me to go over? Hello, guys, talk to me. Is there like... Uh, is there like uh, of these ten examples? Would you like me to do uh, go over any 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 one of them? Please let me know. Hello, guys. Are you are you? Mm, no, you don't need. To, I mean, you guys know what the one to one function is. I assume, like. Okay, let me let me change the camera just a minute. Uh, I mean, a one-to-one -one function is basically uh, a function that um, for every x value, there's only one, there's only one cor corresponding y value, right? That is a one-to-one -one function. So um, let me show you. Like, oh yeah, like you can see it here now. Um, like okay let me give you an example an example of a of a one to one function uh like um uh so a, a one one to one function um a one to one like so that means it's like suppose you have a function like uh, increasing function like this right so this is your x-axis this is your y-axis right and this this is for as you can see like this for example this could be like y to the power ex right this is a graph of y y of the exponential function right um, so this is a one-to-one -one function because for every x, there's only one corresponding y, okay? Um, whereas, whereas if you have a function like this, for example, um, suppose a function like this, um, yeah? So this is a parabola, I'm sure you know what a parabola is. But well, parabola is not a one-to-one -one function because well, it it it, it uh, for, for for every x there is there is well, it 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 is it is still a, is is still a one-to-one -one function. Sorry, it's still a one-to-one -one function because for every every x, they there is a corresponding there there is a corresponding y. All right, still, so this could be like y equal to y equal to x. Yeah, yeah. So this 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 could also be. Oh, it 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 it, it is not. Um, yeah, I mean, in the in this case, I mean, I don't know how you define one to one really, but I mean, it, I I'm I'm really not a mathematician, so I'm not. I maybe I may be I may be wrong in, in this, but maybe this is maybe I'm certainly this this is is a, is a one to one function. It's a one to one. Excuse me. 
is a one-to-one -one function, um, right? Whereas this um, this may not be this may not be a one-to-one -one function, right? Because for because um, Uh, may not be a one-to-one -one function um, uh, because because a, a, a particular a y corresponds to diff, two different values of x, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, this is I I mean, this is something you ought to have learned in your in your math courses so i'm not and I don't, I don't claim to be an expert in this so anyway i mean getting back to getting back to the course i'm teaching you guys now my question is whether you guys have um had, had you had you all looked through the 10 examples i did this is example one um and it's any particular example you like me to go over this is example two Example two is on Poisson, and example three. Example three is oh, trying to split the pages. Example three is on normal, right? Okay, uh, where the mean is theta and the variance is one. And example four. Example four is on also on normal with the mean uh, zero and the variance theta squared. Example five is binomial. Example six is uh, again binomial. The difference between these two is that in this example that you only have one data point. Um, and in the next example six, you have n data points. So that's the difference between examples five and six. Example seven is normal, but here you have the mean is theta and the variance is theta squared. So here it's a little bit more involved than the previous example. And this, this example involves solving of a quadratic equation. I'm sure all of you know this. Um, all right, Robert is asking me to go over this, all right? Um, so example seven is basically, as I said, you have n data points from um, normal with mean theta and variance theta squared. So the likelihood is this, right? It's the product of the density function, which is which is this, right? Right, and the log likelihood is just the log of this, so it, it becomes this, and you can simplify uh, this to this and this to this. What I have done is uh, X, when you take the power two of xi minus theta, you get these three terms, xi squared minus two xi theta plus theta squared, right? And then when you take the sum inside the open brackets, you get three different sums, right? So the first sum, this is the first, this is the second term, and this is the third term. Right, so that's step number two. Step number three is to take the derivative of this with respect to theta. So that gives you this, this, and this, and you set that equal to zero. Then you have this equation, which you can rewrite or rewrite as this, and this can be rewritten as this. Now, what you have here is a quadratic equation on theta. I'm sure all of you know, how to solve a quadratic equation, right? That I'm sure you, you know this formula from your, uh, you know this formula that a, a squared plus a theta squared plus b theta, b theta plus c equal to zero, then theta is has two roots, right? Minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a, right? Right, so if you, if you, excuse me. If you, if you use this formula, you get these two different roots, right? Now, only one of these roots is valid. The reason, the reason is that theta 
represents the variance, sorry, the standard deviation, right? Theta represents the standard deviation and standard deviation by definition must be positive. So only the positive route, you have two different routes here, right? Only the positive route is valid and the negative route is not valid, right? So the, so the valid route is this one, right? Of the, of the two, of the two roads that you have here, the valid route, route is this one, right? All right, now the next thing, the last part of uh, is to show that, that the second order derivative at theta hat is, is negative. To do that, you need to differentiate, uh, okay, to find the second order derivative, you need to differentiate the first order derivative, which is this, remember, this is the, this was the, excuse me, this was the first order derivative, right? Which we found earlier. Now to find the second order derivative, you need to differentiate this with respect to theta, right? So, so this, is what, this is what you will get. You should differentiate it with uh, the first order derivative with respect to theta, you get this. And this you can rewrite. If you pull out one over theta power four outside, this is what you will get in brackets, right? Now, now we need to show that this guy here is negative. I mean, there are several ways you can do this. One way is to go back to star. You remember what star is. Star is this equation here. Star, star is this equation. From, from, from this equation here, you can see that from this equation star, you can see that, that this is equal to this, right? All right, in other words, two theta, two theta times uh, this is equal to this. I call this double star, right? Okay, now what I'm gonna do is, next is gonna, I'm gonna substitute double star into triple star, which is this one. So in other words, you see this term here, two theta times the sum of xi, I'm gonna replace this term here by, by this term, right? Okay, when I substitute this into this, I replace this term by this term. So what you get is this. When you replace th this by this, you, you get this. Now this is clearly negative because you have a minus and a minus, right? So therefore we have shown that the second order derivative is negative. And hence, hence the conclusion is that this must be the MLE of theta. Is that clear, Robert? Hello guys, is that, I know the, this example seven was the most complicated one of the, of the 10, 10 examples I did. That's fine, I, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, so that's example seven. Then example eight, example eight is this one. I think, are you okay with this guys? Oh yeah, Don. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, all right. To answer your question, Don, let me. Okay, this is where I need to really. All right, let me. Let, let me. Um, can I? Okay, one. To answer your question, I think many people have similar questions, Don. So let me. Uh, let me switch the camera just just for a sec. All right. Let me switch the camera. That I will I will answer your question done in a sec. Now you should go back to the uh, the the website. You should go to the website and go to the you see the preliminary section. There is a preliminary section of the website, which and there are two videos. I ask you to watch. One is called the properties of sum. The other one is called the properties of product. And these these two videos give you stuff that you need to know for maximum likelihood estimation. For example, if you look at the properties of sum, these are three properties you need to know. The sum of a constant is this, sum of this is C times that, and this is that. Now, we should go to the properties of product, right? This is, these are four, five properties you need to know, uh, Don. The last property, the last property is the most useful which says that the log of a product is the same as the sum of the logs, right? So it's, 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 the, it's, 
is the is the log of the product is the same as the sum of the logs. So these five properties you need to know them by heart when you when you come to uh, when it comes to uh, maximum likelihood estimation. So so for example the log this product of a constant is the constant to the power n. The product of a constant times xi is equal to this. Uh, the product of the exponential of this is equal to this. And the product of the exponential of this is this. And finally, this one, the log, the log of a product is the same as the sum of the logs, right? So these are five properties all of you guys need to know, right? Now, let me go back to, let me switch the camera again, sorry. Okay, so, all right, so that's what I have used. So I've used the property, the, the two videos in the preliminary section. You really, if you haven't watched them, please, please do watch those guys, all right? So this is example, example eight. And, uh, and uh, what, this is example nine. Example nine, this is where I'm using the, the, the invariance property because he, this guy here, if you plot this versus theta, what you will see is uh, this is a one-to-one -one function of theta, right? And therefore, by the invariance property, the ML, uh, the maximum likelihood estimate of this is this, right? Are you okay with this example, guys? Let me know if you if you if you're not okay with the, with any of these examples. And finally, example example ten. This is example ten. Uh, Again, I have used the used the invariance property because what you have here is a one-to-one -one function of theta. So, by the invariance property, the MLE of this is is this. Right. All right, guys. So these are the ten examples in the in the video. Uh, I ask you guys to watch. Um, I mean, if, if anything not clear, please uh, please let me know. Now, what I'm going to do today, guys, is I'm going to do. Uh, more examples today, um, right? So I will start with example example eleven, right? This is a simple example. You have a variable x that is Bernoulli distributed with, and the question is to find the MLE of uh, p, right? So, so the first thing you need to do is to write down the likelihood. Right, the like remember the, for the Bernoulli distribution, the likelihood is p uh, power x one minus p power one minus x. Right, and part two is to take the log of the likelihood. So the log of this, which is x times log of one minus p plus one minus x times. Oh, sorry, what did I say? Log, it's log of P, log of one minus P. Okay. And part three is to take the derivative. Now, the derivative of this with respect to P is and you set this to zero, right? All right, so if you set this to zero, then you get, yeah, you get this, right? So this becomes, um, Right, and this implies that the, the solution for x, sorry, p, we are trying to solve for p, right? So when, whatever you, solution you get, you put a hat on top. So p is equal to, p hat is equal to x, right? And part four is to, is to take the second order derivative
So if you take the second order derivative, which is the, the derivative of this with respect to p, uh, this will be minus x over p squared and minus one minus x over one minus p squared. And this is clearly negative, right? So hence, is the MLE or maximum likelihood estimator of P. All right. Okay, guys, are you, are you okay with this example? This is example 11. Uh, when can we say that? Why can we say? I don't understand your question, Vincent. Can x be negative? No, x, x is a number that can only take zero or one. Because remember for Bernoulli, Bernoulli x can be either zero or one, right? Can you, can you come back again, Vincent? What is What was your question, Vincent? I don't, I didn't, I didn't follow you. Yeah, it is part of the method, Vincent. The, the, the maximum likelihood methods has four parts, right? The first part is to write down the likelihood. The second is to take the log. The third is to differentiate the log and set it to zero and solve for the parameter. And uh, the fourth part is to take the, the second order derivative and show that it's negative, right? So it's just the method, Vincent, if you, if you, if you follow what I'm saying. Okay, any other questions, guys, on this example? Yeah, you're right, yeah. In, the, in this case, we don't take the product because you only have one data point. You're right. Yes, you're right, uh, man, because in this case, the likelihood is, is equal to this because they, we only have one data point, X, right? But if you have multiple data points, then you will take a product. Right. All right, so that's example 11, guys. If you have further questions, please let me know. So this is example 12. So here you see the difference is that here we have n data points from the Bernoulli. So here, when you write down the likelihood function L of P, you will take the product I from one to N uh, of the density of the Bernoulli, which is P, Yeah, yeah, okay. Now you should take, uh, you should simplify this using the video that I just mentioned, which is called, I mean, again, if you haven't watched that video, please do, right? It's really important. So you should simplify this. This is what you will get. Okay, all right guys. Now this can be further simplified to um, now the sum of this is gonna be N minus yeah. All right, okay, so that's part one. Part two is to take the log likelihood. So the log of this so is gonna be Yeah, all right, and um, yes, uh, well, 
it has to be independent charts. Yeah, the data, <coughs> the data have to be independent in order to do an MLE, but it, it is possible to, it, <coughs> it is possible to work out the MLE even when the data are not independent, but that is beyond the scope of this course. So we will not talk about that in this course, but in this course, we will only talk about MLE when the data are independent, right? Okay. Okay, Charles. All right, so this is the log of the likelihood. Now, part three is to take the derivative of the log likelihood with respect to, with respect to P. So this is gonna be, All right, and then you set this to zero. Now, if you solve this for P, I'm, I'm not gonna go through the process. I'm, I'm sure you guys know how to solve equations. So if you, if you solve this for, for P, you will get P hat equal to the following. All right, and this is simply the sample mean X bar, right? All right, and finally, the part four, the last part of the process for finding the MLE is to take the second order derivative which is the first order derivative of this, right? So, Right, and this is because of the negative and the negative, this is negative, this is less than zero, right? So hence we have shown that P hat equal to X bar is the MLE of P. Right, okay guys, are you, are you okay with this example 12? Hello guys, talk to me. Okay, thank you. All right, the next example I'm gonna do is example 13. Um, so here you have a variable X from a geometric distribution uh, with parameter P, find the MLE of P. So the first part, I'm sure you guys know the This is the probability mass function of of uh, of a geometric distribution. X can take the values one, two, up to infinity, right? Okay. So that's again. There's not there's no product here because you only have a single data point. So so you just the likelihood is the same as the probability mass function. Okay. All right, this is the log likelihood. Uh, you take the you take the derivative, so this becomes one over p. Uh, if you take the derivative of this, you get x minus one divided by one minus p. Yeah, and you set this to zero and solve for P. Uh, let's see what we get. So this will be, all right, so this implies that 
that P hat, the solution for P is equal to one divided by X, All right? And finally, part four is to show that the second order derivative is negative. So if you differentiate this one more time with respect to P, you get minus one over P squared uh, minus X minus one over one minus P squared. And this is clearly negative, right? because x, x minus one has to be non-negative because x as you can, x can only take the values one to infinity. So this has to be negative, right? So, so the conclusion is that uh, so MLE of P. All right, guys, are you okay with this example? Example 13. Everybody okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, next example, example 14. So this is it's just a variation of the, of the example 13, where here you have uh, and data points from a geometric distribution. So, so the likelihood is gonna be the pro product i from one to n of p uh, one minus p x i minus one in brackets like this, yeah. All right, so you should, you should simplify this using the uh, using the rules that I mentioned in, in, the, in the video, in the preliminary section. So please watch that video if you haven't, uh, okay. All right, now this can be simplified further to To, to this, all right? So this is the likelihood function. Part two is take the log of this. Right, this is the log of the likelihood. Part three is to take the derivative. So this is one over P and the derivative of this is minus And you, you set this to zero, right? Um, and if you solve this, I, I'm sure you know how to solve this better than I do. So I'm not gonna spend the time. So if you, if you solve this for P, this is what you will get. In other words, this is one divided by X bar. X bar is the sample sample mean, right? Now to show that this is a MLE, you need to take the, the second order derivative. There's a minus in front. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. Thank you, man, thank you. There should be an N here. Thank you, Pedro. 
Thank you, Pedro. Yeah, there should be an end here, end here, so. But still, the solution is still the same. Sorry, that, will, that wouldn't change. All right, so this is this is the second order derivative, right? And clearly this is negative, right? Because because this is negative and this is also non-negative because the sum of xi minus n is non-negative. Remember, xi is each each of the xi's is greater than or equal to one. So this must be non-negative. So the whole thing must be negative, right? So hence what we have shown is that that this is, is an MLE of, of P. If, if, the, if the MLE is not, if, sorry, if the second derivative is not ne negative, then you cannot say that the, the solution is an MLE. So it cannot be an MLE if the second der derivative is not negative. It's not negative, yeah. Should be plus. What do you mean? Should be plus. I, I don't understand. Can you come again? All right. The reason. The reason. All right. Uh, all right. Okay. Let me explain. I mean, this is minus, guys. This is minus. This is minus. There's no plus here. I don't understand why you guys say plus. This is minus. Minus. Right. Anyway, okay, let me explain why this must be non-negative. I think that's one of the questions. The reason the reason that this is non-negative is because x remember xi is geometric, which means that it has to be greater than or equal to one for all i, right? So you sum that implies that the sum of xi that's that's by by definition by by definition of a geometric variable. All right, so, so the sum of xi has to be greater than or equal to the sum of sum of one. The sum of one for i from one to n is must be must be n, right? Okay, you follow me? So so this implies that the sum of sum of uh, xi minus n must be non-negative, all right? So this is this kind of, this explains why this guy here why this guy is, is non-negative, right? Is that, is that clear to you guys? Oh yeah, okay, thank you. Any any other questions on this example, guys, you like to know? This is example 14, which I just did. Any other questions, guys, please let me know. All right, okay, if not, I will move on to, all right, let me move on to example 15 now. Example 15 is, you have this, I don't think you have seen this before, but this is, um, you have a, a random sample from this PDF, right? The question is to find the MLE of theta. So the first part is to write down the likelihood function, which is gonna be the product i from one to n of theta squared Yeah. All right now, if you take the product of this guys, this become theta power two n. So this is two n e minus theta times the sum of x i. Yeah. All right. So that's part one. Part two is to take the log. The log of the likelihood function. So it's the log of this, which is gonna be two n times log of theta, right? Minus 
theta times the sum of xi. You follow me, guys? All right, part three is to take the derivative. So this is gonna be 2n divided by theta minus minus this, All right? And you set this to zero, All right? If you solve this for theta, if you solve this guys for theta, you get theta hat equal to 2n divided by the sum of xi, which is, you can write this, you can write this as two divided by the sample mean. Okay. Right now, next to to show that this is an MLE, you uh, take the second order derivative, which is which is the first order derivative of this, which is minus two n divided by theta squared, which is clearly negative, right? All right, so hence we have shown that theta hat is the MLE of theta. All right, guys, are you okay with this example? Hello guys, let me know any questions, please. Okay, thank you. All right, so I will just, this is example 15. Next one, example 16. All right, this is another distribution you haven't seen. So here you have data x1 to x from this PDF. K, there are, there are two parameters, but we are assuming that K is known but, and theta is unknown. So we only we need to find the MLE of theta. All right, sorry, example 14. This is example 14, my friend. Sorry, yeah, I, I will, I mean, I will, I will scan this and post it again. So you'll see it later on. I mean, later on, when I say later on, I mean, in half an hour, you will see it, right? All right, so to do this uh, example 16, uh, the first thing you need to do is to write down the, the likelihood function, right? Remember, although k is, is a parameter, we are assuming it is known. So the only parameter that is unknown is theta. Okay. So let me... This is the gamma function. Right, okay. Now you should simplify this using the, the rules I mentioned in the video. This is what you will get. Right, this is the, all right. So part two, part two is to take the log of this gas. So you should take the log of L of theta, it becomes NK times log of theta minus N times the log of the gamma function at K. Now the log of this guy, if you need to use the role I mentioned earlier, K minus one times the sum Remember, the log of the product is the sum of the logs. That's one of the properties in the video, right? Now, log of this is yeah. So this is the log likelihood. Part three is to 
is to take the derivative with respect to theta. So it's gonna be mk divided by theta. This is a constant, so the derivative is zero. This is a constant derivative is zero. And the derivative of this is this. Now you set this to zero and solve for theta. You get theta hat equal to nk divided by the sum of xi i from one to one to n. And this can be written as k divided by x bar. X, x bar is the sample mean, right? Now to show that this is an MLE, uh, we need to take the second order derivative. So this is So it's just the derivative of this with respect to theta, which is minus nk divided by theta squared, which is clearly negative, right? Okay, so hence we have shown, we have shown that theta hat equal to k divided by the sample mean is an MLE of of theta. All right, guys, so this is example 16. Are you okay with this or no? Yes, you sure? Okay, good, thank you. I, I mean, don't, be, don't hesitate. If you, if you have a question, please feel free to ask me. So this is the, I only got a couple of minutes left. So this is the last example I will do today. This is example 17. So this is, uh, here you have xi, which are Poisson distribution, Poisson distributed with parameter i lambda. So th these, these are independent, but they're not identical. So this is an example where, this is an example where the data are independent, but not identical, right? So Now, I'm sure you guys know that PMF of a Poisson is e to the minus lambda, which is i lambda here, lambda to the power xi divided by xi factorial. Right, this, I'm sure you, you, you know this from probability one, right, don't you? So now you should, you should simplify this using the rules I, I mentioned to you earlier. This is what you will get. It's really important that you learn the rules correctly, to use them correctly. Otherwise you get into problems, I mean, later on in the course. So it is. So I'm, I'm basically using the rules I, I talked about All right, so this is, you should, you should take the product of this, this is what you will get. All right, so that's part one. Part two is to take the, the log of the likelihood. So this is gonna be minus lambda times the sum of i. Now, sum of i, I'm sure is the is plus, plus the log of this will give you, uh, I from one to n of xi times, I'm sorry, I'm running out of time slightly, but please, please bear with me for a second. Please just be patient for, for a sec, guys. All right. All right. And the log of this is gonna be minus Right, so this is the log of the likelihood. Now part three is to take the, the derivative with respect to lambda. And if you do that, you get minus sum of i 
i from one to n plus this is a constant this one the derivative of this is this and the derivative of this is also zero now if you set this to zero and solve for lambda you get lambda hat equal to equal to the sum of xi i from 1 to n divided by the sum of i i from 1 to n so this is i guys i okay now the sum i'm sure you know the formula for the sum of i um well there's a question from alexandra about the facebook i don't know now sum of i is um I mean, if you, if you have any questions about this course, I really like to know. I mean, I, I, I really want to improve, improve the way I teach this course. So if you, can, if you can give me some suggestions, I would appreciate it, right? So this is the, uh, this is the solution for, for this equation. Now to show that this is a MLE, you need to take the second order derivative. All right, so the second order derivative is the second order derivative, sorry, excuse me, what I'm gonna say. The second order derivative is the derivative of this, which is minus the sum of xi i from one to n of lambda squared, which is clearly negative. So hence we have shown Sorry for running out of time one more time. Hence, we have shown that lambda hat is the MLE. So this example is, is slightly, slightly more involved than the previous example because in this example, the, the data are independent but not identical. So you have to be a little careful when you do this example. Yeah. Are you okay with this? Uh, so these, so I've done seven examples today, uh, plus the 10 examples in the video, plus the four examples. So I've done about 21 examples in total uh, on MLE. I think, I think that's plenty, I guess, but if you want me to do more, I'm, I'm happy to, I'm happy to do more if you want me to, okay? But, all right guys, so any anything you like to, Tell me about how I can improve, uh, I can do more examples. What if it is identical, where, which, where step, which step is influence? It's the same, I mean, if it is identical, the, the steps are the same, uh, the steps are the same. Uh, so, um, these steps are the same i mean there, there's no there's no difference between identical and not identical right okay so it just the the simplification can be a little bit more involved uh when the the the, the data are not identical the data are not ident identical right okay Right, if you want to do more examples, practice questions, there are, you can go to the web page and you see there are, there are exam questions for the past six years. You can do those by yourself. Uh, and if you get stuck, you, you can look, look up the solutions, which are also on the page, web page. So, I mean, that's what I suggest if you want. Yeah, just go to the course web page and do the past exam paper questions right okay and and if you get stuck you can look at the solutions all right guys so this so this is the the the, the session for the review session and once again thank you for coming to this and um, by the way one more announcement next uh, this is the last week before the easter break uh, so um I hope you guys have a good Easter break, but we will have tutorials. I mean, computer-based tutorials this week. 
there will be five of them, right? So please do attend your, please do attend your computer-based tutorials this week, right? And once again, if I can improve my, I mean, I really, I mean, I, I really want to engage with you guys. And if I can do anything to to improve this course, please do let me know. All right. Anyway. Okay, guys, have a have a good afternoon or good evening. And um, um, Thank you, sir. and take care of yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.